Well, right, Bunde, did these two? It should pull away. Okay, in this yeah. video, this side should pull away. I'm going to be changing so this I'm radiator. I'm guessing. Um, not really. It's a modern radiator, not 15 years old. I did this, but I'm guessing it's a lift. My one is 600 millimeters by 450. It's going to be about two and a half centimeters a wide. Pull away. Uh, check your one. Uh, it's a single, single radiator. So some of them two sides. It's that wide. It looks more like. I have to work that one out. Ask for four centimeters. I'm like, measure yours anyway. Make sure you get the right one. Um, so. If yours is leaking, as I did, you need to stop the leak. You need to stop the water going in. You need to stop the water coming out under these two caps. Cheap, adjustable spanner. There should be a flat part where you can tighten that. I've already done mine, of course. Here and here, and that side, that side. So the water is coming in, water is coming out. Notice I've Put paper, uh, masking paper all around. On a lot of radiators, when you undo them, inside there's a lot of black metal oxide, probably iron oxide, uh, that will stain and will never come out. So you've got to be very careful. I have noticed on this one, on these modern radiators, wherever they put on it, it comes out as not black gunk, not carbon gunk or not um, iron oxide. However, I've masked it anyway, and um, the next step you need one of these keys. So the tools you need, quite simple tools. This is a uh, half a centimetre key, radiator key. I've got, showed you the adjustable spanner. I've got Latco slick tight heavy duty pipe thread compound. PTFE tape as well. I'm probably going to PTFE tape it, put this on it to seal the joints. Now, when the radiator comes, it just comes like this on this block. It's not got this, not got any of this. It's just that thing on its own. Um, so there'll be a point where if I undo that, they'll come out easily. But to undo this from this section, it won't be as easy. Uh, so because you have not got the leverage so bear that in mind uh, so first firstly then let's drain the water it's got a nice drain section right there right so on this um, drainage plug here it takes the half a mil key that you normally find and normally what you find on that um, on the radiator is up here there's the same key to allow it to bleed the air but I see instead like a, a screw for a, a normal a flat plane screwdriver so I'm not sure I'll undo that in a minute to allow more air to get into allow it to drain properly but we need to start draining it see how much we can get if I if I don't have to undo the top bit I won't uh, let's just see if it comes out so I'm not sure what to expect you know, if it's a, the you know a black liquid, then a, an old but okay, I've seen that before. If it's just like a clear liquid, then I would say okay, these are modern radiators, and it's just doing its thing. Must be have a new kind of substance in. Uh, that's not turning. So camera's in the way, but I should be. Okay, let's um, let's undo this key. Standard screw. And it's just hissing. So I'm expecting water to come out. It's not. Uh, there should be quite a bit of water in there. But it doesn't seem like it. So let's undo the top screw. Okay, as soon as I turn this. starts to be releasing the air gets in and the water comes out so when you turn the bottle upside down with the spout is narrow enough nothing comes out so that's clear water that's unusual so expecting black gunk but don't be fooled I'm not going to be fooled I expect to be black gunk uh, 
at the end of this. So what I'm going to do, now I'm not going to be full, I will undo this side, this nut here, and I will undo the other nut, and then when I take this radiator out, I am going to be putting my thumbs over the end, taking it outside, somewhere like in a, in a garden, and then uh, using fresh water to flush it through. Because uh, I am expecting down here, at the bottom, to be full of black iron oxide. Remember, do not let that stuff get onto your carpet. Well, I'm just going to drain all that away. I'm going to stop draining out. That means there will still be, if you look at the level where the um, pipe is, there will still be a layer of water underneath there. That could be where the black stuff is located. So I'm just going to tighten that up. And I'm just going to tighten this up. This plug. And when I go to when I go to um, the garden, I will of course. Uh, won't really need that anymore. Just tip it sideways; it will come out the, the black gunk. Um, okay, water has drained. I've tightened this. I've tightened this. Uh, just need while the radiator is in in located in the uh, wall, situated in the wall. I'm just going to see if I can use this ordinary uh, spanner and it undoes very easily on this side. I think no special tools needed yet. So it needs a better, that's not, that's the other side's not that I'm doing as well, so I need a better. We'll try and remember to leave a link in the description. For, I bought this fellow, Fat Max. Quite expensive, I think it's £15. Uh, Stanley quality equipment. Uh, now, oh, it releases by pressing that button there. Normally, you kind of have to re uh, jiggle the teeth on those um, adjustable uh, pliers. So I want to make sure I turn the right way. It's a little bit too. Okay, it's got proper grip on Okay. Not too bad at all. There's the top of radiator. Let's see if it's See if it shifts sideways. It does shift sideways a lot better. So um, if I undo one of these heads, the water's going to come blasting out. Is there any way I can think of it? Um, if I undid the pipes from the wall and I pull the pipe down, that's another way of doing it. If I undid the head off one of these ends. That's yet another way of doing it. If I just undid these two heads, it should come off. So it may well be the only way I'm going to go. Looks like I can move this sideways a bit. Just catch the water. I can move this sideways somewhat. I can move it back. So it does give me a little bit of wiggle room, however. I'm going to take this off anyway. Mm. That's in there pretty tight. Just move the pipe to the side and, and slid. So I've done it is coming. So the pipes are a little bit flexible. I guess if you have a really short pipe, this would be quite, quite impossible. Oh. So it's a different fitting. It is a lift. After all that, it was just a little bit of a lift and put on. Okay, have a look. I've got on my replacement one, it's got a different attachment, but this is the attachment I need. 
I mean, that's come out. The valves are quite good though, aren't they? The valves here and here, they're not leaking any water. Right, okay. I need to carefully take this and drain it, drain the rest of it. This is the old radiator. I think it's a good idea to buy new ones of these, but I just didn't do it today. So I'm going to reuse the old one. If this if this is a problem, just take you back to the shop and get a new new one of these things. Notice on the thread, someone's put PTFE tape on it. That's fine. That's exactly what I'm going to do as well. PTFE E tape and plumbing paste and we'll clean that thread up as well. So that one's come off fairly nicely for me. Now this where this got, where this went on, it wasn't you know there wasn't any uh it wasn't too hard to undo that but this where it sits onto the radio is much harder. There's rust uh there's that gunk on it plumbing paste much much harder to take off Need, what I need is one of those spanners that have got grippy sides so I'm going to look in my spanner cabinet see if I've got a better spanner I'm using a 17 uh, it's a slightly better quality one yeah, it's done the job uh, I wouldn't say it's a 17 it's not even an imperial I tried my imperial spanners and it's not the imperial either it's not even a hex, it's not even a proper hex. It's a funny, almost five, five sided, it's weird. Have a look at that. This one's a very strange one. It's not a hex. When you do things like this, do it slowly. You don't want to build heat up in it. Friction brings heat and cause a problem. Not the thread. Leave that up. Let's come out okay. I'll clean these threads out. I'll clean everything up. And um, be ready for fitting, really. As simple as that. I need to. Salvage this top section. I'll probably need to take this plastic off and put a hex socket in there. Don't know what hex size that is. Well, these top ones are 22, even 21 is not a fit. Um, 22 is a little bit loose, they're a funny kind of measurement, and they're not, I don't think they are um, imperial either. So 22, I'm just going to take this plastic cover off to see if I can get it sideways. So I've got, okay, that's coming off. So I don't need a, a socket. Right. All right. So the specs on my replacement radiator is as follows. You can see right there. Um, it just comes with four blanking plugs, so you need to remove or have new uh, new adapters. I don't know what you call them. New ends to them. Stellrad. Uh, I think these are not mounting. These are not mounting just to come off. I mean, just to protect the mounting point. So it comes with a new top planking plug and bleed screw, uh, but it doesn't come with the bottom section. That's fine. These just come off. These slide off of it. Comes with a bracket for the wall. I don't need that. I just need to put it straight on. That's it, really. Put the ends on. But the bottom ends on, top ends on. So I put PTFE tape on the ends uh, of the drainage plug and the inlet plug. Uh, 
the PTFE tape has gone around clockwise onto uh, the fitting this section and this section um, I will probably put some on there as well and there as well so next thing is the paste uh, heavy duty pipe thread compound paste with PTFE brushing cap so that there's a brush attached to this cap so nice and handy Whoa, this stuff is like the thickest gooey cream you can imagine. Never used this stuff before. I don't know what sort of pipes have been used for this job. For this brush, look at the size of it. I don't think it fits the uh, container either. It's been bent backwards. I think they need a smaller brush. There's a lot in there. I need to clean the excess off. So I would say I've got about seven or eight winds of PTFE tape. A bit too loose for my liking, to be honest. I'm hoping to paste with. Take up the slack. I don't think it'll go around another. I don't think it's possible. You point, point upside down. Yes, it would be. This is a max. Right, so now we do it back in plumbing paste and PTFE here as well. And I remember how tight it was, it wasn't very really tight at all. And just repeat how I find it, not too tight. That was really all it was, really, on that one. So, on the other side. Store these end caps back on. Is a problem which way is which. Let's try it this way. Okay. So they kind of sticky out bit to the outside. end uh, bits straight edge on the front oh, I'll show you it's a bit that curved backwards and the straight edge straight edge aligns with the radio yeah. easy as that right don't know if there's any drying time for this stuff uh, don't know at all I've got a feeling there's worth leaving it for maybe an hour or two and then uh, filling it back up so all I'm left with what I'm left with is open open this tap and this tap and then bleach screw open until the water comes out of the bleach screw and that'll be it make sure this is tight before you do that and that's it all right thanks for watching uh, I'll just show you the bleach process but hit the like button now and I'll finish off in a second so open up the valves, turn the screw a little bit, let the air out, as soon as the water comes out, tighten it up. Bleed screw, that's it. Check for leak, of course. So the plumbing paste is quite essential. You can, it's, it's, it's never a, a permanent fix, it's not like a glue adhesive. You can still break the joint and years to come we need to change it again. 
can't imagine you know, I need to change this again. But anyway, that's it. Hit the uh, like button, subscribe. Oh, there we go, just the right time. I'm just going to make sure there's a squirt of water coming out. Oh.